Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to work on this watercolor painting. I'm going to talk a bit about the process every once in a while since there's going to be some new things that I tried out. But I also want to talk a bit about making goals for 2020, my personal goals. I love making goals for for every year because it's just such an exciting time of year. It's one of my favorite holidays honestly is New Year's where I can just start fresh. I can really optimize a lot of these dreams that I have and try to figure out how I can actually begin making them happen. And I definitely work best with that kind of goal motivation. And yeah, I, uh, I feel really optimistic in particular about this year because last year, the first, the first most of the year was really hard. I was having a really hard time with my emotional connection with my artwork and I was feeling really frustrated with with my art with my art career with what I was doing and I didn't know how to get out of it I was just feeling a lot of really negative feelings and about two-thirds of the way through the year I I had a breakthrough everything just got so much better and I've been feeling way more energized creatively and optimistic and motivated to keep working and make things better and and yeah, it's nice that at the end of last year, I feel like I was starting to grasp what I actually want to do, what I want to do better, what I would like my goals to be, so that now that the new year started, I I can just clarify those and really make them precise and clean. I can write them out and I already have that, that motivation and emotion there that I, I didn't have last year. So, so hopefully this year will go a little bit better for me overall. Overall, last year was helpful though. I will say that I am really grateful with where it did end up and what I learned from it and everything. Okay, so that's enough yammering on about just goals in general. So I, I like to be very list, list making. I love making lists. So I wrote down all of my 2020 goals in my bullet journal and I classified them by different things and tiers. The vast majority of my goals are are art related and career related, which is basically another extension of my artwork since that's what I do for my job. But, but yeah, some of the things that I have in mind for going forward for my, for my artwork is I've realized that I would really like to create collections of my own work for myself. So I, I love making things that are in a series. I talk about that all the time, or at least I talk about it when I do do it, which has been a, a hot minute since I've done a series of pieces, but it gets me really creatively excited and it helps me to, to think outside of the box and to deal with different challenges. And I, I do feel like I make my best work when I'm working with that kind of constraint. So I'd like to move into doing not everything, everything doesn't have to fall into a collection, but being more conscious about those kind of choices so that I can sit down and think, okay, well, I'm going to do these many pieces in this collection and maybe I'm going to have these stickers that fit in this theme or whatever. And, and I like the idea of being able to do that focused and, and create it, but then also have it uploaded to my store in kind of this collection way so that it's just a bunch of things that really fit together really well that are up and they're there. So that, that's something that I haven't really tried yet, but I think that it'll help. I think I'll enjoy it. If it's something that I try out and it just doesn't really stick, then it's all right if it gets cut out of my goals and I can move on to focusing on others, but that's one of them. I also really want to submit to group shows like in galleries. I have wanted to do this for a really long time, but I've never felt confident enough with the body of work that I have, with my portfolio, with it being quality enough, but also everything being that same level of quality, like having enough work that really was quality enough. And, and I put my foot down this year, I'm going to actually tailor my gallery, not my gallery, my uh, portfolio so that I feel as prepared as possible to actually start submitting. And I need to be able to be ready for rejections. It's it's going to be okay. I need to remind myself of that, but actually submitting is an accomplishment of itself. So that is my goal, is not to get into them, but to actually submit to these. Oh, I wanna take a little break really quick to talk about the painting of this piece. So I tried some new things out with her hair that I'm really excited about. I 
feel like this little experiment has opened up a lot of doors and it's something that I want to really see where it can go. So usually I have this really, I didn't realize until I did this experiment in my color comps, but I have a very set way of approaching shadows in my pieces. I like to go with a cooler version of whatever that color is. Or oftentimes I'll just resort to using blue on top of those colors because watercolors are very transparent. So, so the blue just becomes this tint to the color that's already there rather than being like a pure blue. And I was playing with the color comps. I was not really feeling a lot of them. And then I, I decided to go in with this purple, pink, mostly purpley color for the shadow on her green hair. And was one of the color comps, ooh, one of the color comps and I, I loved it. It had this vibrancy to it that was really exciting. There was a lot more going on in her hair. It wasn't nearly like one tone. And it was just like eye opening. I'm like, this actually can look good because in my mind, I was like, I can't put purple on green because there's that red in there. So it's just going to become really muddy and desaturated, but it didn't. So I, I was really, really enjoying that little thumbnail, the color comp. And then moving on into creating it into this final piece, I I just loved that process of having variations of some areas that in the shadow, it just went closer to that, that uh, root color, <laughs> not root, but the main color of her hair, her green color hair. And then some areas I let it be a little bit more blue and others a little bit more purple in the shadows. And that just gave it so much more interest to it so that even me while I was working on it was a lot more interesting and it kept me on my toes and it kept me thinking about things. And in the end, it ended up taking me a little bit longer than I normally do on the hair. But I think that that was a really good thing. It allowed me to consider a lot more to it rather than just going into this like autopilot mode that I often fall into and I'm really trying to break out of. So yeah, it came with a lot of a lot of things that I think really benefited this piece. So I'm excited to really play more with what kind of colors I'm introducing to layer on top of each other, things and combinations that I wouldn't normally have considered. And I am so, so excited that I really have committed to figuring out how to paint without initial lines there. So I'm doing the lines in watercolor because I love line work. I just, I love being able to adapt it as the piece progresses. And it makes it way more dynamic. So I, I focused most of that green impact around her face. And then as it got farther away from her, it became a little bit bluer and then eventually a little bit more of this gray color where I had mixed in purple, blue and green. So it, it really just fades more into the background. And that way there's more sharpness and saturation around that main focal point, her face. And then as it receded out towards the edges of the pieces, the piece, the singular piece, it just got a little bit more faint and it took a step back. And I love that that is an option now that when before I was doing everything with one, one color, one pen, one ink, it all just stood on the same level on the same plane. Okay. Let's talk a bit more about a few more of my goals for this year. I, I hope this is not too boring for you guys. I love listening to goals that other people have, even people who aren't necessarily even artists or artists in different types of disciplines of art, like writers and musicians. I've watched so many of those videos because it's really inspiring for me to make my own goals, but also to really focus in on the reason that I'm making those goals. So one of them, which is super vague that I put down, actually a couple of them are really vague, but I, I put down that I want to create better quality artwork, which I know a lot of things I'm already moving in the right direction. And I'm aware of certain areas that are just not as high quality as I want them to be. So I'm going to focus on those. One of those is that I, I feel much, maybe this isn't like a quality thing per se, but I feel like stylistically, I'm much happier with the pieces that have a little bit closer to real proportions than the ones that end up being a little bit more stylized or, or cartoony in a way. So that's one of the things I'm going to focus on. And, and also all sorts of other things that, that I have again, noticed about my quality that I could really improve on. And the other super vague thing that I wrote down is that I want to listen to my gut for my artwork. I've noticed that, that I think these things often 
and I've really not listened to them most of the time. So I'm trying to really listen to myself when I have these initial gut instinct feelings about my artwork because when I listen, it usually ends up way better, even if it ends up being way more work. So like for this piece, actually I have the, the example of this one. I started off where I just wanted to play with things and experiment. I wanted to use my gouache, but I was, I was two hours in and I had just barely gotten like the bang area of her hair, like right around her face. I had just gotten that painted and it was just so slow and tedious and I wasn't enjoying it, but I was like, I just have to push through this and make it happen. But then my, my, that gut instinct said to me, I was, I just need to stop this one. I need to stop it. I need to step away from it. And then I need to start it over in watercolors. And of course my more practical side was like, no, you have to get this done by the end of the week. That's my deadline. I need to make a video of it. I need to move on to the next project. But I, I did, I stopped it. I actually went back to literally the drawing board and I redrew her face or at least I adapted it because again, I wanted it to be more realistic in the proportions and I figured out certain issues that were there because it was a smaller piece. I kind of let them slide originally and I am so much happier that I did that. It, it turned into a piece that I really enjoyed and I'm really happy with it. Whereas the other one, I would have not enjoyed the painting process and I know I wouldn't really have enjoyed the final result nearly as much. And I do have prints and the original painting up at my art shop. There is a link right down in the description. But if you were a top tier patron, that's the Citrine tiers over on my Patreon during the month of December, then you're getting a print of this in your package that is actually going to be hand embellished by me. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be special for you guys. So yeah, I do want to give a huge thank you to every single one of my patrons over there on Patreon. That's another one of my big goals this year is to make that much more, much more rewarding for you guys who's supporting me over there. I really do appreciate that. Uh, and I, I do have a link to my Instagram down in the description below as well. I am posting almost every day, maybe every once in a while I miss a day, but I'm pretty active over there now. So if you'd like to follow me over there and see things in between, check that out. I'll be back next week with another art video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you then.